All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, June the 21st, 2021, and wow, is there quite a bit of news to report on today. I know that I had said I would do a, an episode yesterday, a Kraken episode, but too many things were unraveling at once. I decided to leave it for today just so we can get much more of a clearer picture of what's going on around the world. So let's get into it now. I do want to also make a note uh, before we start that I will be reporting on some things that also occurred Friday uh, and Saturday as well too, of course, since the last uh, Kraken episode was uh, Thursday. But anyways, first off, Israel launched another strike on the Gaza Strip and they had said after Naftali Bennett, the new prime minister came in and was sworn in, they had said, and I quote, Operation Guardian 2 is is approaching now if you search up operation guardian or guardian 2 um, you're going to find that it generally references a handful of Air Force apparatuses and military strikes and things like this. I'm not saying that that's what the case is here, but I mean, honestly, I don't think they would send in uh, the IDF of, over the Israeli Air Force, uh, to be honest with you. Now, look, I could be very wrong. However, they've already bombed uh, certain parts of the Strip uh, again. It's not obviously as intense as what happened a handful of weeks ago, but again, nonetheless, it's still a bombing. It's not for me to say what's right or wrong here, but... Again, my point is that the the IDF made a strike right before, or sorry, right after Naftali Bennett went in, and according to Israel, again, this I'm trying to say this in a very unbiased way. There were no casualties and things like that. Now. Honestly, I don't know if I believe either side of any military anywhere in the world when they say there's no casualties, but, you know, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. But you see, here's the thing. A lot of people said, oh, look, this this uh, new prime minister, uh, Naftali Bennett, he's not uh, he's not as you know extreme as Netanyahu because, yes, he sent the IDF into the Gaza Strip, uh, but at the same time, there were no casualties, so he seems like he wants to you know control things a little better. Next thing you know, they dropped some more bombs, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there were casualties. So the point I'm trying to make here is there's a very strong argument that, you know, again, Naftali Bennett was at one point a Prime Minister Netanyahu's protege, if you will, amongst many other politicians. So I think the overall goal has not really swayed from Netanyahu being in there or not. I think that the, the general direction of where Israel is going to go as a country, not just what they're going to do with their military, is kind of going in the same direction. It's just a matter of which leader is best for the job, right? Now, with that being said, there's a total opposite side of that too. But, you know, we we have to see how things play out ultimately. Ultimately. Um, the next thing, and we're going to be talking about Iran here a little bit just because there's so much to cover. So um, Iranian Navy vessels have changed course. They are now streaming north up the west coast of Africa and possibly heading to the Mediterranean instead of Venezuela. Okay. You might be saying, Dave, you know, maybe this is another part of the, you know, what you discuss with regards to strategy and military strategy, but this is a big thing, folks, and I'll tell you why. So take a look at this. So this basically means that Iran now has a navy that they can dispatch to seemingly any part of the world now, assuming these reports are accurate. Now, again, we have to factor in the possibility that this could have been a lie to us, and Iran may have been able to do this for much longer than we initially thought, right? Because the whole thing was that, you know, a lot of countries were saying Iran shouldn't have the right to build up their military and things like that, as well as, you know, China and the CCP. If you want me to be totally honest with you folks, in my humble opinion, they've had this ability for years. It's just going public now. So, I mean, look, I could be very wrong, but I think ultimately, again, this is just one of the very few things Iran has. I'm pretty damn sure Iran has nukes. Again, whether or not you consider that a good thing or a bad thing is not for me to say, but ultimately, I think what we're seeing here disseminating into the public domain is nothing of new revelations to the intelligence community by any metric whatsoever. Uh, the next thing is that Iran's nuclear power plant has undergone an emergency shutdown and will be shut down for about four days. Look, I mean, it, it's, I, I don't know. To, to be honest with you, this could have been a hack from the U.S. Um, this is not uncommon, specifically when we look at things like the, the Stuxnet virus back in 2010, which from my understanding, was developed, I think, in the mid-2000s, 2005 or six. For those who don't know, the Stuxnet virus was a virus that uh, was very covertly, I believe via the NSA and the CIA, but more the NSA in this case, uh, inserted into Iran's nuclear power plants where it could shut down Iran's uh, power plants without Iran having the ability to turn it back on or without even knowing who did it. So this is a very old virus, and this just goes to show you if this was able to be done 15, 20 years ago, then, you know, what the hell are they doing now? So this could very well be uh, Israel. This could very well be um, 
the United States, the UK, Australia, any of the allied countries that are, you know, against Iran having nuclear weapons and things like this. Again, this shutdown could have definitely been a cyber attack. Uh, I don't rule that out whatsoever. And also, folks, we have to remember, too, for those in Europe and in the West specifically, it's very hard to find news about things that, you know, Western countries or European powerhouses are doing because, again, they're not going to tell their own citizens what they're up to. But if we can find it, we'll, we'll find out that, you know, they, they don't do that much different uh, differently than uh, their tactics are not that much different than these countries they claim to be their enemies. So, you know, just something to, to ponder, right? Um, the next thing is that the Chinese central bank has forbidden banks from offering financial services that could be used for trading crypto, such as Bitcoin. Again, this is the the control the ccp has on china and if this is the way they want to go and not enough people in power are going to question the authority of the ccp out of fear or because they like the direction it's going then i, I guess hey so be it so be it right um the next thing is that a reverse repo record um excuse me sorry trudeau admitted that they're strongly considering mandatory vaccines for all canadians wanting to travel internationally yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of you actually have been messaging me uh, directly saying or asking in the comments, Dave, is it true uh, that uh, Justin Trudeau wants to do this and that? Yes, from my understanding, I believe they said that by the end of this month, they're going to be lifting the restrictions on the Canada-US border. Um, if you've been fully vaccinated, you can now fly freely. But here's the other thing as well, too, that I find interesting. I know people personally that have gone to and from the U.S. Um, many times in the last three, four months, uh, within the last three, four months, multiple times. And they told me, they said uh, between Canada and the U.S. and they've returned back to their home in Canada uh, crossing the border. And they've said to me, Dave, we haven't had a problem whatsoever. So I have to be honest with you, folks. I think a lot of what we're seeing here, uh, specifically within Canada and, of course, the rest of the world is the media just trying to deter people from traveling. But ultimately, I mean, I can tell you right now, flying domestically within my own country, it's not nearly as bad or as strict as the, the media makes it seem. However, these vaccine passports are very, in my humble opinion, are, are very frightening. So um, my concern is not getting out of the country. My concern is if I want to get, get back in because I don't plan to take the vaccine, right? Um, the next thing is that the uh, Iran's president-elect, and I'd like to just pull up this article here just to give a little more context. He, uh, Iran's president-elect Razi, or Razi, hopefully I said his name correctly, addresses ties to max, mass execution. So he... Um, was a uh, deputy prosecutor in Tehran back in 1988, and he basically said he was part of a so-called death commission that ordered the disappearance and execution of thousands of prisoners. Look, he... He did what he did, and he got voted in as president. It's the... You know, we have to also make the argument whose right is it for people outside of that respective country to make a judgment on that. Now, again, obviously, we can all have our opinions. I'm not trying to, you know, prevent anyone from having it. But at the same time, how much of that opinion should affect another country's politics, right? Because, you know, the argument could be made that people in Europe and in the West very often say things like, you know, oh, this country should do this and that. But then when it comes to their own country, it's like, well, stay the hell out of my business, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of that hypocrisy there, right? And then it's, it's, balanced out with the debate as to whether or not certain world superpowers should have that level of influence in other countries in order to keep a stable world, if you will. So it's a very strong debate. Now, this uh, new president-elect, um, Razi or Razi, uh, excuse me for butchering his name, has also mentioned that he felt the United States and the, uh, the European Union have failed on nuclear talks. Now, again, what he means by that, I'm not sure, but clearly it, there's going to be a shift here right um the next thing is that the kremlin has said that the recent biden putin summit has not stopped washington from trying to quote contain russia end quote look i, I don't i I honestly do believe in this particular scenario, and again, I could be wrong, just my opinion, I honestly believe that there's no bullshit with, with this particular statement from the Kremlin. They're, the White House is trying to crack down, very simple, and look, it's it's so weird, the, 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 the delicacy and the balance of the perception that the way Western media portrays Russia. One day they're very dangerous that I see, right? And I'm sure many of you see this as well. One day they're dangerous, the next day it's, oh, no, 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 but we're going to contain them, don't worry. It's like, okay... You're playing, you're playing the people of your own country against a nation that you want to be fear-mongered, but at the same time, you want to make it seem like you're stronger than them. And it's interesting because 
again, I'm going to just, I'm going to say this because I find this very significant and maybe it's a bad example, but it's very similar to, um, um, to Hitler's triumph of the will. Now I'm not equating Hitler to the United States government. Again, uh, to be honest, that argument could have, could sort of be made depending on which administration, which people, what have you, but you know, operation paperclip and all that. But my point is this, the, textbook agenda that Hitler had, at least if you watch things like Triumph of the Will and stuff like that, is that he had a a, a proposal or a concept when he would speak to the masses where a foreign enemy is, you know, would portray the feeling of about to be attacked. You know, they're coming for us. The outside enemy is coming for us. But at the same time, that outside enemy is very weak. So wait, what is it? Are they strong and coming for us or are they weak? And my point is, folks, is that that's what the Western media seems to be doing with Russia. One day it's like, holy shit, look what they did. The next day it's, don't worry, we're going to take care of them. So which is it? And ultimately, folks, my point is this. This plays into the psychological warfare aspect of fear mongering and and propaganda, to be honest with you. Now, I'm not saying what Russia's doing is good or anything, but I mean, to be honest, there's a lot that say we should leave Russia the hell alone, right? So, the uh, next thing is that the newly appointed Israeli foreign minister will have uh, will visit the United Arab Emirates next week in a historic visit for such a uh, uh, for such a high level official to go there, and he will also be inaugurating the consulate in Dubai. I mean, look, if this is again, this could be an intelligence operation, or they could actually want to strengthen ties amongst each other. Right, it's hard to say. Uh, we're gonna have to see how this plays out. It's in my opinion, it's too early to tell. Right. The next thing is that Bitcoin fell an additional ten percent after China intensified uh, its crypto crackdown. And at the same time, let me just pull up something here because I think this ties in. Um, let's see. The Chinese government has also said too that the uh, the Chinese central bank, excuse me, has also mentioned that the uh, Chinese banks cannot offer any type of software platform or service that would incorporate cryptocurrency or anything like that. So, you know, that kind of um, throws everything out the window, so to speak. Right. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's move on. So the U.S., uh, the next thing is that the U.S. has offered to meet North Korea, quote, anytime, anywhere, end quote, which is, to be honest with you, it's a... Um, it's a dramatic change, uh, to my understanding, compared to previously. I mean, uh, you know, the Obama administration used to say things like, you know, uh, we don't negotiate with terrorists and things like that. Now, obviously, things change. I'm not trying to, you know, um, point out a flaw in a previous administration, but it is interesting to see the sudden change in context. Right now, we could argue Trump made that, you know, for the better or for the worse. It's not for me to say, but again, Trump, from my understanding, if, unless I don't have my history correct, um, was the one who said, okay, let's let's talk with Kim Jong-un, right? So again, it depends on your perspective. Um, the next thing is that conservatives seem to be winning against President Macron in early polling in France. Now, keep in mind, the election is still about a year away, but this is consistent with a lot of concerns that uh, people who again, tend to have a very right-wing perspective uh, within France, such as the generals and the people who signed the soldiers who signed those petition um, forms saying that they feel that the President Macron is favoring, you know, Islamism too much and that the, the traditional core culture of the French, European French culture is um, dissipating. Now, again, that's not for me to say if that's right or wrong, but that's what actually happened. The petition letters were signed, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there, right? Um, the next thing is that Brazil allegedly passed 500,000 COVID deaths. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this just to update everyone so you don't have to hear this from your, you know, you don't have to feel obligated to turn on your local news thing or whatever, just so you know. Um, again, we have to, we can argue very strongly about the causes of those deaths, but I don't want to get banned off of YouTube. And at the same time, I also don't even feel like addressing it. I feel like we all know what's happening there. So uh, the next thing is that Spain is going to pardon jailed separatists. And some analysts are saying that this could would deepen the divide. Look, it's I'm fairly familiar with what's going on there, but at the same time, I don't want to comment because it's still a fresh situation. As most of you know, my my personal style is I don't like to really comment or give my opinion on f a fresh situations because I really don't have one, especially when newly occurred events uh, unravel. I like to give it, you know, a handful of days, and then I look back and say, okay, what's happening here, right? Um, the next thing is that. Rival protests are happening in Peru as tensions rise over the presidential vote. Again, there's it, it, there's a strong divide. There's a strong divide, not just in the West, not just in Europe. There's a very strong divide, right? Um, it, it's happening in Africa. People are, again, we can argue people are waking up or people are getting more crazy. It, it really depends who and how you look at it, right? So um, 
it's all it's all about perspective and what's going on on the ground. The next thing is that the Nicaraguan banker, uh, a Nicaraguan banker, excuse me, was arrested in a crackdown as some accused the president uh, Ortega, Daniel Ortega, of targeting opposition leaders and other figures before the November election. Again, perfect example of how you, of how unfortunately, but it's realistic, and how certain countries you can take advantage of this system, whether it's on the legitimate end or you're kind of you know on the back end uh, calling in a favor, so to speak. Look, you got that kind of pull. If that happens, that's that's I mean, it's terrible, but it just goes to show you how much these people want to cling on to power in some cases. Right. Um, the next thing is that El Salvador has stressed very strongly to the IMF that both Bitcoin and dollars should be accepted. The country's finance minister said that he made it clear to the IMF that El Salvador has no plans whatsoever to abandon the dollar. Now, again, that could be true. Uh, that could also be a straight out lie just to kind of calm down the IMF and say, listen, accept our cryptos. And then once they do, it's like they slowly over the years dissipate from, you know, utilizing the dollar. Now, again, it could be true as well, too. He may be on be totally honest here and say listen you know or she might might have said look we want to use both we want to give it a shot right now again some say that that's not a good sign because of the country that's doing that you know El, El Salvador and because of their economic situation but again to each their own right um the next thing is that the Colombian government is, inv is investigating after a car bomb injured 36 soldiers at a military base yeah that's 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 interesting. I don't know how much influence the cartel still has in uh, in Colombia. I'm not trying to blame it on the cartels, not saying that's them. But again, very interesting, right? Um, the next thing is that Apple Daily, so the Apple Daily News, the place that the CCP had raided the other day, uh, could shut down in a matter of days permanently uh, because the CCP froze the $50 million allocated to the Apple Daily company to you know pay employees, do the payroll, and, and all that. Um, and they froze the assets. Now, again, interesting that Apple is running it out of China, but you know, again, maybe they're trying to do something for the CCP initially, as in, listen, you know, we'll, we'll provide some economic um, stimulation there, if you will, right? Financially, put people to work and stuff like that. I'm sure Apple has direct connections with the CCP. I mean, you can't deny it at this point, right? The, the iPhones are everywhere, so to speak, but um, yeah, so it'll. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what will happen in that particular situation. Um, the next thing is that a new photo appears to show Princess Latifah aboard. But here's the thing, folks. I'm not even going to delve into this because we can extrapolate so much that it, we don't have anything to go on here. Who the hell knows? You know, um, I encourage you to look up the picture yourself, make your own judgment. But I, I don't honestly, I don't know. Um, the next thing is that the current Swedish government has been toppled politically in a no confidence vote again. Assuming this is legitimate, that's democracy, right? Um, you know, people don't like what the government's doing. Get them out of there. Simple. That's how I see it, unless I'm missing something. Um, the next thing is that Germany is probing Apple's market dominance, um, and as well as Amazon's being probed by Germany's antitrust watchdog, and Facebook is being probed uh, in Germany as well, and they're being, sorry, investigated over VR account rules. Um, look... I, I like, I have to say, I must admit, I don't know German politics in depth. I like what the German government's doing with regards to, uh, you know, exposing and revealing studies that could cause issues with COVID. I like what they're doing here. Obviously, this crackdown on big tech is probably not going to do much in the grand scheme of things, realistically. But, I mean, I must admit, I like the concerns they have. The question is, are they going to push hard enough? Because if they don't, then, I mean, you know, whatever, right? It's It's... It's just maybe just for show. Who knows? Again, I'm sure many of you know German politics better than I do. So maybe this is just a grandstanding show, right? Um, a former. The next thing is that a former White House doctor has called for uh, Biden to take a cognition test after what he saw at the G7. Yeah, I agree. I. It's true. Like I'm not even trying to rip on the guy. Just take a test. You know, um, and the final thing is that Rand Paul has come out and said that COVID in all likelihood did come from a lab. Oh, how convenient, you know. So, again, if I had said this even two months ago, two and a half months ago, give or take, this video and this episode would have been removed. I would have got a second strike on YouTube. What what a joke this is, you know. Um, and yeah, and finally, Bill Gates' money manager is uh, is under fire for bullying and harassment uh, claims that he was allegedly, you know, Bill Gates' fixer for many years. Again, that's in the in the limelight too now because of the divorce. Can't help but think of the similarities between Epstein and, and Leslie Wexner's too, uh, uh, too, right? So, um, anyways, that's it for today. I know there was a lot of news. Tried to cover it as well as I could. I appreciate all you for listening and watching, and we'll catch all of you very very soon. Cheers.